I am Dr. Mark Ballow. I presently reside in Florida and am on a part-time faculty at University of South Florida in the Pediatric Allergy and Immunology Division that's in St. Petersburg, Florida at All Children's Hospital. I'm going to talk to you today about one of the Choosing Wisely topics as follows. Don't recommend replacement immunoglobulin therapy for recurrent infections unless impaired antibody responses to vaccines are demonstrated. This is a uh, Choosing Wisely topic was uh, developed because many physicians used replacement immunoglobulin therapy inappropriately where they had not demonstrated the fact that these patients had an underlying immune deficiency disorder. So certainly there are patients who have significant hypogammaglobulinemia, less than 400 or 450 milligrams per deciliter, recurrent infections, and by and large those patients uh, indeed don't respond to vaccine challenges, so clearly uh, fall into the category of primary antibody deficiency disorders. However, there are other patients who have fairly normal serum immunoglobulins, and I'm talking here about serum IgG, who may also have recurrent infections and the inability to respond to vaccines. And we call these patients selective antibody deficiency. And uh, these patients may also be uh, amendable to replacement gamma globulin therapy. However, it's critical that in patients who have fairly normal levels of serum immunoglobulins, uh, that we evaluate or work up those patients to determine their response to antibody vaccines like tetanus, diphtheria, influenza, and pneumococcal vaccines. And then using this information, make a decision whether indeed that patient has an antibody deficiency disease, even though the serum immunoglobulins may not be that low. Now, there are many reasons why patients may have recurrent infections and primarily upper respiratory infections. So particularly in the pediatric age group, it could be uh, the child is in daycare or there could be older siblings bringing viral infections home. There could be passive smoking in the house. There could be underlying atopy. So it's, it's important that not only to evaluate these patients and their, if these patients who have recurrent infections for their ability to respond to vaccines in order to determine whether they have a primary underlying immune deficiency disorder, but to consider other factors that may go into um, or contributing to their recurrent uh, infections.